Today we're recording live in front of an audience and I couldn't be more excited for our special guest, Michael Orr. Michael Orr is a first round draft pick, a Super Bowl champion, a New York Times bestselling author, a father of four, and the founder of the Orr Foundation, dedicated to making a difference in the lives of kids who need it most. Michael spent eight seasons in the NFL, winning a Super Bowl title with the Baltimore Ravens and also playing for the Tennessee Titans and the Carolina Panthers. Michael's childhood overcoming the effects of extreme poverty and homelessness was the subject of the Academy Award-winning film, The Blind Side. His mission today is to provide access and opportunity for socioeconomically disadvantaged youth. We are so thrilled that you are here, Mike. Thanks for joining us on the big stage. Thanks for having me. So let's start <clears throat> right from the beginning. You're from Memphis, Tennessee, not too close, not too far from where we're sitting right now. You're the sixth of 12 kids. You grew up in extreme poverty in an environment where people in your community struggled with drug addiction and incarceration. As a child, were you able to envision a life outside of those circumstances? Well, uh, thank you guys for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure. You know, you know, growing up, uh, you know, my first memory is being homeless at three years old. And uh, from three years old to probably about 11 years old, I was in a foster care shelters. Uh, you know, I can remember for one, for a full year and a half that I, I didn't go to school at all. I was just on the streets and uh, just trying to survive. So when I look back, you know, going through the things that I went through um, at that early age, thinking about where I am today, that's why I believe in God. I believe in a higher power at that early age. I think the only thing that I could do was try to survive. And from the time I was third grade, no one has ever had to tell me to get up or hmm. go to school. I've always did it on my own from third grade up until now. But uh, it, it, it's always, it was tough, it was rough. And, you know, I, I really don't, you know, see how I did it. But no, I didn't see it at that age. And that's why, you know, I do what I do for kids, you know, that's, you know, doesn't have those resources and the opportunities. Well, we're definitely going to get into that. But the arc of your story is so remarkable. And I'm curious to continue this theme. Did you, when did you start dreaming of playing in the NFL? And did you see that as your winning ticket out? Um, I, I think, I, you know, the first thought of uh, professional sports came when I was about seven years old. Um, it was a, I know we got a lot of people from Cleveland in here. It was a shot on Elo. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, uh, it was, uh, watching Michael Jordan and the Phoenix Suns playing in the finals and everyone was around the TV and everybody was, uh, you know, they were I'm like, you know, cheering, you know, Michael Jordan, this and that, just enjoying. And that was my first memory. I, I think the first thought, um, when I really got on the journey, like I said, when I started to think about my future, uh, when I was about to turn 13 years old. And when you're a teenager, uh, growing up in a situation and environment that I grew, grew up in, once you turn 18, uh, you're worth for you, you don't get uh, government assistance anymore. So a lot of the kids, you're grown uh, and you start to get thrown out of your homes, uh, people, you know, they're they're turned off from you because they're looking at you as a grown man at 18 years old. So when I was 13, 12, about to turn, turn 13, I decided right then and there, and I kind of understood how fast time was gonna fly for me. So I started to change my life right there. In sports, I was a bigger kid, uh, you know, growing up in the neighborhood, you play everything. So I could, basketball, it just, baseball, football, everything. So uh, 13 was when I decided that I was gonna be either an NBA player or football player. You know, I was smart enough to say I didn't have the body type for an NBA guy. <laughs> so being, you know, over 300 some pounds, can't jump like these guys. So I uh, went to plan B football. Um, so, you know, that's when my the, the thought of being a professional athlete first came into my head and, you know, I, I had to do something. But, um, you know, yeah, I'd say 13 years wow. old. Wow, that's amazing that 
I don't think I knew what I wanted to do at 22. So that, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's like I said, the first memory of me was homeless at three. So, yeah. you know, growing up, you get off the porch a lot faster than people. Like my kids, uh, my son, daughter, they probably can't go down the hill and find their way back from the mailbox, you know? <laughs> but uh, that, that's just the way it is. Well, that determination <laughs> and drive and resilience is clearly a part of what's made you so successful in so many areas of your life. Can you share maybe one of the biggest lessons you've learned about determination and resilience? Um, I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing for me, um, it was the not knowing it was to doing everything right every single day um, and, and not knowing that uh, what I was doing was the right thing when everybody around me was doing the total polar opposite. Uh, you know, that's drugs, everything else. And I'm going to school every day. I'm getting up on my own. And, you know, I'm going through this process of uh, – doing something that I don't even know what's right. I didn't see anyone that had jobs that were doing positive things. So, um, you know, it was a, it was a plenty of days where, you know, I wanted to give up. I wanted to, uh, you know, I wasn't as motivated. Uh, but the most important thing, the determination for me was uh, just staying consistent. Mm. Uh, it takes a while to get the results that you're looking for. Sure. You're, you're, you're not motivated, but, you know, one thing about it, me, I'm going to I was going to stay consistent and I was going to, uh, you know, be the first one to school. I was going to be the first one to practice every day. And I was going to do the things that what being cool to me was doing the total, total opposite from everyone else. Mm. You know, I, I didn't want to if you didn't want to hang around me, if I wanted to go watch a movie in the house or something. Hey, so be <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, I want to do something different. Uh, you know, stay consistent. And I can promise you, if you're doing the right thing every single day, it's going to happen. And that's something that I, that's something that I put in my mind. Getting old worries a lot of people, uh, but it never worried me because I knew if I was doing the right thing every single day, once I hit those landmark ages where when I turned 18 to get ready to go to college or when I got to where I am right now, I was going to be fine because I was going to, you know, stay consistent every single day and just doing the right thing. And I put that in my mind early on, early on that, hey, if you do right, doing what's right, you're going to be where you need to be. What a great message. And so clearly tied to overcoming adversity by staying consistent and, and doing what needs to be done, that grind that you talk about. And in 2016, you did face some adversity. You suffered a very severe concussion. It eventually took you permanently out of the game, and you've been very open and honest about the fact that your mental health suffered from that injury. What's a key piece of advice you now offer about prioritizing one's mental health? Um, it's very important, and yeah, it was a it was tough. It was a tough time, and you know, I was blessed with uh, talent. I was a blessed with ability to, you know, outwork. Uh, a lot of people, the grind, work ethic, but uh, it's like I said, the mind is the most powerful thing. And it was mind over matter for me all my life, you know? Uh, and just getting the job done. And once you, you know, you, I've gone through knees, gone through just all kind of injuries, played through them all against Cleveland and get some other teams you guys are from, but, you know, but, um, you know, once you, you know, once you can't, you know, you can't play through the mental, you can't yeah. play through the brain. It's nothing to play with and it's nothing to take for granted. And I think we all do, um, you know, for me to getting healthy, uh, it, it took a lot of patience. It took, you know, having a great circle. And it, it, it takes, you know, being vulnerable mm -hmm. and understanding. It's just like I said earlier, we're so tough mentally, we all are. And we think that, hey, we don't need anybody to get to help us or get to get us where we need to be. Uh, but, you know, you do need a circle. You do need help. You do need someone to talk to. That's the healing process. You know, I tell young people, 
you know, when they think hey, you were just an athlete or you were smart at this or, you know, everyone in here was, you know, had these resources and opportunities and I don't have those. But, you know, everyone here on this earth is here for a reason and you have an ability to, you know, go do something great. And when you don't accomplish your the greatest thing that you were set on this world to do, you're taking energy and that synergy from this planet. And because you didn't reach your full potential because you didn't think that you were capable, you know, it's all up here. So it's the most important thing. And you have to find uh, those tools to keep it healthy, uh, to keep it going. But, uh, you know, it's uh, mental health is, you know, it's, it's the key to success. Such a good reminder, especially in this day and age with all that people have going on and living on their phones and social media. And yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Um, so you retired from football and I'm curious to know how much thought first went in before you retired on what you were gonna do next, but how did you exactly hone in on what you wanted to do next? I was working hard. I was beating everybody in the facilities, on the fields, and because I wanted to be comfortable after I was done with sports. And my whole dream was to not do anything afterwards. <laughs> you know, I'd been, you know, working and just struggling, you know, my entire life back against the wall. But the thing I thought about when I kind of decided I'm going to, you know, just, just walk away from it, you know, a lot of people know me, uh, the blind side, who I am, uh, and but I was always more. I was always bigger than that. What you've seen on the screen, I was always, I always prided myself on being smarter than the next person or mm -hmm. going to school. When this journey first started for me, you know, school was the first thing that I had to do first. Uh, like I said, going to school in the third grade and you know, getting up on my own and starting that journey, even before I started playing football in the eighth grade, uh, catching a bus across town just to go to school, and then the next year playing football. So the journey started with education for me. Uh, and, you know, for me, I always prided myself on that. So I, I really didn't like the legacy that I felt would be painted of me. I wanted a bigger legacy. And that legacy for me was uh, ch still still chasing greatness, but inspiring the next generation. You know, that's what that's what greatness is for me. Um, and, you know, I, I felt that that's what I wanted my legacy to be, is inspiring those young kids who aren't gonna be, aren't gonna go into the entertainment or being a mm -hmm. sports uh, athlete and being something greater you know, you can be greater. And the game that I'm playing now is, uh, it, it, I feel that it's 10 times the game that I played, you know, on the field. And when you, you can see the kids that's coming through the foundation that we're pro providing these opportunities uh, to, you can, I can lay my head on the pillow and say, geez, you know, you're, you know, that's an amazing feat right there. Is, uh, man, you could, you're, you know, you're given a different destiny to a, a destination to a young person who, you know, would have went down that road or ended up where you would have ended up without sports. Oh, yeah. But, you know. Well, I love what you just said because it's not something you hear often that someone who aspires to play professional sports, when they think about their dream, they're actually thinking past to that time period of what they want their life to be. And I think whether you know it or not, you've been such a pioneer and blazed a trail for a group of young individuals, athletes, to think of themselves more as I'm an athlete. And you see it every single day and we see it every single day in our business, working across the world with athletes and entertainers who think of themselves as businesses and what they wanna do philanthropically in their community and what they wanna build. And so really kudos to you, Mike, for really being one of one of the leaders that has changed that perception of that part of society. So thank you. And and you mentioned it. I want to go right there, which is about the foundation. 
your mission is to show those from similar backgrounds that no matter how dire the circumstances, there can be a bright future ahead. So how exactly will your foundation, the Orr Foundation, seek to help disenfranchised kids? Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, let me get back to what you're saying. The, the Blind Side book came out while I was in college, so I missed out on this NIL, NIL <laughs> <Yeah>. deal stuff, man. <laughs> so I'm like, Bad timing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Terrible timing. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I got to go get some residuals. But, <laughs> um, you know, what the foundation, the War Foundation is doing uh, is, is provide opportunity and the resources, socio, socio disadvantaged uh, youth and, you know, providing them with the mentorship, the programs and, and, and the programs I'm giving them. It's basically when I got out to the school that I graduated from, Briarcrest Christian School in Memphis, Tennessee, um, it was a holistic approach for me. You know, it, I was provided mentors. I was, uh, you know, we go take trips out of town. We, uh, you know, do so many other things that I had never seen before. You know, I had people that was helping me with clothing, uh, everything. So a quick story, uh, eighth grade year, I wore the same white T-shirt every single day. I got up, washed it. And the thing, I, I felt that, and I still think that it was a smart thing for me because, you know, kids make fun of you. So in order for me not to, you know, we were making fun of each other, but in order for me to not be made fun of about my clothing, I wore a, wh a white T-shirt every day. <laughs> they didn't know I was wearing the same shirt every day, you know? <laughs> it was nothing on it, no design. So when I was finally started to have pro two or three different pair of shoes I can pick from in the morning before school or different clothing. It started to give me the confidence that I needed to be successful in the classroom, going to school with confidence mm -hmm. and, you know, feeling that I was b belonged around uh, all these, these young people who were, you know, had all the resources and opportunities. So uh, we're doing the mentorships, the, uh, clothing, everything that you need, transportation uh, and providing the, you know, the education piece, putting them in uh, schools where they'll get a, you know, where, where they'll get a, you know, get a great education. So, you know, uh, that's, it's the holistic approach, providing them with uh, scholarship funds, um, you know, everything that I saw changed my life and gave me the uh, confidence and the, the, opportun the opportunity to go out and be great. So uh, that's what we're, what we're doing. Amazing, amazing. Um, so our audience today is made up of founders, business owners, so leaders are making up this audience in this room today listening to you. So I want to ask a couple leadership questions of you. Um, the first one is, you know, you've done so much. You're clearly such a leader. We've talked a lot about that. But how do you continue to grow and develop as a leader today? Um, I think the, uh, an approach that I took when you have – you have to be a leader when you're trying to be a leader. I think uh, it, it goes back into when you know you're you're an, an alpha, say, when you know you're an alpha, alpha male or whatever. Um, you have to be you go you have to be vulnerable. You have to say, you have to show the people that you're trying to lead that, hey, I'm human. We're all human. I don't have this thing figure out, figured out. So I'm gonna show. You had to get better through action. I'm not going to manage anyone. I'm not going to look down on anyone. We're going to all come on, come up together. We're going to all be great together. But, you know, leading is a, it's an actionable item type thing for me. Uh, it's lean by example. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be vocal. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, through actions is the biggest way to lead. Uh, for me and showing people how to do it without dehumanizing people, without, um, you know, showing people up uh, and being accountable, uh, character, having great character. Um, you know, when someone sees you, you know, the room, they, they light up when they see you. And, you know, just uh, like I said, accountability is everything. So I think actionable items and accountability, being consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think all these, uh, all those things are the traits of a great leader. If you're talking and you have to walk it, 
you know, mm -hmm. so you can't, you know, contradict yourself in that way. A lot of great themes that have been coming out of this whole conversation. So great way to summarize those. How do you define success today? For me, it's family for me. Mm -hmm. Success is, uh, you know, raising a great family, being a great father, a great role model uh, to the young people around me. You know, family is everything. It's something that I never had uh, growing up. I wasn't taught, you know, how to do much of anything. So it's uh, leading by example in my home first, uh, of course, through my foundation, showing kids that, showing young people that it, it is possible. Um, and I think once the first uh, group of students come through the Orr Foundation and graduate, which we'll have our first students this fall, uh, once they, you know, come through uh, and be successful. And, you know, you see those young people like I was and they walk across these stages or going through the halls of these schools that, you know, I was able to attend and seeing that right there. You know, that's success. That's, mm -hmm. uh, I feel that, like I said, was my calling, uh, why, why I struggled the way that I did uh, as a young kid uh, to be able to share these messages and to tell people, to show people, hey, it is more, it's more kids out there like me. You know, hey, they're not gonna be as big or quick or, you know, be able to walk on egg shells and not crack eggs, stuff like that. Uh, but you know, but they're out there. They're smart. They're uh, they they can change this world uh, with their mind. So seeing those kids be successful, I think for me, uh, that's success. That's great. What takeaways can you offer specifically for business leaders seeking to be impactful in the work that they do? Right. The, you've you've found such a good balance of what you've built and the way that you're giving back. But to others, what would you say on how they can be more impactful. I think just I, I think it's just that you know giving back. Uh, you know the more that I got successful, uh, the more the more that I get, the more I give. You know I love giving. I mean I just I would give it all if I didn't have to. You know eat. You know so. <laughs> but I, I think the more the more success you get, the more you have to give back. The more uh, you get, the more you give. And I, I think, uh, you know, that's, you know, the calling for any and everyone who's in this room or who's, you know, a part of that elite group. Um, you know, we're only as good as the people, you know, at the very bottom or the weak link on the team, as they say. I used, to, I mean, I've been called the weak link, <laughs> but you know, on the team. But I, that must have been a good team. Hey, that's what I was about to say. Hey, I guarantee you, I'll destroy your weak link. <laughs> so we're gonna win some games. But uh, you know, that's success, and that's uh, that's what we all should be doing. Is you know, give and give back. Awesome. So we're coming towards the end of our conversation here. So we just have a few more questions. Um, but I, I'm, I'm trying to dig deeper into, you know, understanding some some sides of you that maybe other people haven't heard in your other interviews and stuff. Um, and I want to know if there's one thing today that stands out to you that makes you the most proud. I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm extremely thankful for for the uh, man. I don't know. That's a tough question. <laughs> you know, I'm proud. Like I said, I'm proud of. The, the family that I've created, mm -hmm. the person that I've become, coming from where I, where I came from, uh, and showing the, just being someone who can show uh, someone that it, it is possible and uh, that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't a st statistic or a product of my environment. Uh, and, you know, just being that person who you know, who can go out and have a successful foundation or be a successful uh, person off the field or off the courts. And just, you know, it, it's it's so much more or uh, just talking baseball with Lori about her son, Hunter, hitting the home run, you know, just <laughs> the other day, just doing things like that. Uh, you know, that's what that's what 
makes me proud. That's when I lay my head down on my pillow. You know, I like to, you know, have pillow tests uh, when I think of things in life. And, you know, that the pillow test, that's to, that's to, that's the true success teller right there. Mm-hmm. You know, when you can lay your head down every single night and be able to sleep well, you know, <laughs> that's how you know you're doing something right. And like I said, chasing greatness and inspiring this next generation, um, you know, that, that's what that's what I'm doing every single day. That's the legacy that I want to live and leave. Well said. So we always love to ask our guests this one question. So uh, if you've listened to any of the episodes, you might know this was coming. But if you haven't, then you don't. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) what is the best piece of financial advice that you've ever received? Man, uh, you know, I didn't grow. You know, it was tough for me. What I, you know, I I took it from myself, you know, (laughs) in the beginning. For me, it was to save. Yeah. For me, it was to save. Um. I think it helped me lay the foundation what I have right now. Uh, And then once you, you know, get that team around around you, uh, you know, I I don't want to go into too many financial uh, things, (laughs) but uh, for me, it was to save. Great. Uh, And I'll just leave it at that. I think it has set me up for where I am right now to be even more successful when you're not – and that's what I tell a lot of athletes, you know, right now, because you have to learn. Yeah. You have to learn where you're going and you just you have to learn through time and through going through trials. So for me, uh, in the beginning, safe. It's great. Well, it's such a juxtaposition of the story we started with to where we are today and the, the lessons you've learned and accomplished on your own and with help from others in your life are just so inspiring. It's so powerful to hear and the way you're giving back now is just so incredible. So if someone wanted to know more about you and your story, the real Michael Orr, what (laughs) would you tell them? I don't know, I always... um... Well, and I'm thinking particularly about something you and I talked about before, which is coming this summer. Oh, uh, when your back's against the wall, my new book yes. is coming out August yes. 8th. Yeah. This, this is how humble he is. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. I got caught up in the moment. But uh, yeah, get the, it's on pre order right now uh, when your back's against the wall. It'll be out August 8th. Um, but yeah, check it out. It, it's, uh, it's a continuation of where I left off last time from my book, I Beat the Odds. Uh, it's going through the things. We talked about a few of them today, but it's basically a pay- playbook on life. Uh, talk about mental health, uh, depression, just overcoming uh, obstacles. And it's an entire playbook on how I got through these things and uh, having a great circle, looking yourself in the mirror, healing yourself first. You can't help anyone else until you heal yourself first. So I, I think that's the most important thing and the reason why I'm sitting right here today, healing yourself first. And now I can go back and give. I can, now I can go back and help others and uh, continue to lay out a great message and continue to help people. That's great. Well, looking forward to reading that book. We're going to try to get a copy to all the audience members in the room today when it comes out. So we're super excited for that. Mike, I can't thank you enough. It's always great spending time with you. Thanks for joining us today on the guys. Big Stage Podcast. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you guys having me. Awesome. Thanks. 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 Thanks.